I know that authenticity can seem like somewhat of a self-help buzzword these days, but I do want you to take a moment and think about what being your most authentic self really means to you. Now think about a moment that that authenticity was challenged. Imagine if every single day, your relatives, your doctors, and people that don't even know you were preventing you from being who you truly are. This is the reality for thousands of transgender people, not only in the United States, but all across the globe. Now, we don't have time to have a discussion about all of the different complexities and definitions surrounding gender, but for today, I'll give you a surface level definition. Being transgender just means that one does not identify with the gender that they were assigned at birth. So, for example, if a child is born and a doctor writes an F on that person's certificate for female, but then that child grows up and they realize that that F doesn't really fit anymore, then that person is transgender. And one thing that many trans people experience is something called gender dysphoria which is just the discomfort and distress associated with not identifying with one's assigned gender. Gender dysphoria can feel like feeling disconnected from one's body or being uncomfortable and distressed by the way that they are perceived socially by other people. Many trans teens and adults may choose to undergo medical procedures or legal changes, such as changing one's gender marker, hormone replacement therapy, or various surgeries, but for transgender children, transitioning looks quite different. And that takes the form of social transitioning. So as it sounds, social transitioning can consist of asking people to call you by a different name, asking people to use different pronouns, growing out, or cutting your hair, or changing the way that um, you dress yourself and appear to society. I cannot overstate the importance of allowing transgender children to socially transition. Remember when I began this talk like two minutes ago and I asked you what it would feel like if you couldn't live authentically? Imagine the effects that that would have on your mental health every single day. From personal experience, Transitioning socially has been one of the best things that I've ever done for myself, and if you'll let me, I'd like to share that experience with you today. When I was around nine or 10 years old, I didn't feel like the other girls in school. That's the most cliche thing I've ever said, but it's true. <laughs> I didn't like the way that people were treating me as a girl. I didn't feel connected to my body anymore, given the beginning effects of puberty, and just overall, I was unhappy. And as I grew older, I really began to hate my voice and my name and she her pronouns and just everything like that. And by the time I got to high school, this dysphoria was unbearable. It was all that I could think about. I was so angry and upset all the time. Mom, you know what I'm talking about? I was not nice. <laughs> um, and I knew that I had to take that leap of courage and decide to come out and socially transition. So in high school, I asked people to start calling me Alex, use they, them pronouns. I cut my hair, it has grown out, but you know. Um, and I got a new wardrobe. Going through this process has had amazing effects on my on mental health and it's been so liberating and just wonderful. And while it was difficult, at times, I don't regret a single part of it, and it was one of the best things that I've ever done for myself. And my story is not unique. So many trans people across the globe went through the same thing. And all of this isn't just anecdotal. There are studies that back up what I'm saying, too. For example, in 2017, the American Academy of Adolescent and Child Psychiatry released a study that measured levels of depression and self-worth amongst transgender kids, ages nine to 14, that were allowed to socially transition. And they compared these levels to their non-transgender peers. And unsurprisingly, they found that these transgender kids had levels of depression and self-worth that were on par with their non-transgender peers. So this shows that when we allow trans kids to socially transition, 
it has a positive effect and it keeps them on par with their peers. But on the other hand, in 2011, the National Transgender Discrimination Survey reported that 41% of its respondents had at one point attempted suicide. 41%, four in 10 transgender people have at one point attempted suicide. That is more than 25 times the national average and that number is not an accident. When we don't accept and support trans people, especially as children, those negative emotions of just rejection and depression will follow throughout their entire life. I know that it can be somewhat of a hard topic to empathize with, but you don't really need to understand exactly what it feels like to be trans in order to support the community. I encourage you to take what I've said today and become an advocate. All I'm really trying to say is that we as a society should support trans kids and not inhibit them from living life as their most authentic selves. Please, 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 at the end of the day, to conclude, do not take your ability <coughs> excuse me, to live your life authentically for granted. Thank you.